JCConf 二零一八精彩议程，由 Soft Leader 松林科技保险核心系统领导厂商 ，OS 号召各路顶尖人才携手放眼亚太 ，Line 拉近你我的距离，赞助为您播出。Hi everyone,、um, this is Tim Pao Yu or MTWTM from. Mozilla Taipei, and there's Nevin who will be talking about the Firebase part、um, in these、um, in this session. And first of all, I'm going to talk about the localization and、um, when we're using and how we're using localization process in our project Firefox Rocket. Firefox Rocket is a、um, project that is originated to be. Uh, to be used in Indonesia mainly, and it's currently open to Indonesia, Thailand, India, and Philippines. But it's not available in Taipei for now. But maybe we will be、um, we will be able to show you、um, about more about Firefox Rocket recently, maybe.、Um, but if you want, if you're interested in our project, it's a browser that is、um, specially designed for. Um, countries that has low、uh, low bandwidth and has、um, using the phones that are not top tier. So、um, you can have the we have the whole source code in GitHub and we also have released there. So if you're interested, just welcome to visit the、um, Mozilla TW account and on GitHub. Yeah. So let's get started. Okay. Um, this is the agenda today, and if you need a slide, it's in the、um, lower right corner. That's the slide we're using today, which is exactly the one you're seeing on the stage. And we will talk about localization in the first to three parts, and later we'll talk about Firebase. So yeah, let's talk about community-based localization.、Um, we're I am emphasizing the community here because、um, at Mozilla we're、um, localizing. We're not localizing through partners.、Um, yeah, they're still partners, but not still not over not with business partners. We don't pay to the agency and ask them to localize for us. Rather, we have a platform that's called Pontoon. It's shown here, and、uh, on Pontoon are contributors. We, who are the、um, volunteers? They can just localize the strings that we have on in Rocket or other products that we have at Mozilla. So、um, I think it's adding up some complexity here with the community idea because、um, if you're just working with some outside agencies, the format itself is、um, is part of the spec, so it's simpler. But if you want to work with so many Uh, other people, other、uh, so many volunteers, so many contributors. It gets a little bit more complex. So、um, this is why I'm going to talk about the localization process today. So localization.、Um, anyone have idea what localization is?、Um, the first of all, we might think when we talk about localization is a translation of the UI strings that is on the.、Um, On the application that you have, like maybe this one, Google Flights,、um, it's it, it needs to be localized on different in different languages. So、um, that's the first part. But localization itself is actually、oh, sorry, did I miss something?、Um, localization itself is actually more than just the, the UI strings. Like for example,、um, I'm going to just span a few examples here. Like this is a classic. Joke, like when you、uh, there's a joke that when、um, your partner or wh whoever you're in a relationship with asks you, so what's your idea for、uh, of a perfect date? So you might answer,、um, it's year, month, day, because that's the that's the thing that I'm used used to, because um, um, I don't. Like every time when I go visit the United States, it's always very confusing for me to have the month, date, year, and because. For example, when on March third, it's zero three zero three, and you、um, sometimes you're not sure if it's month or date. So, yeah, that's a classic joke. And this is a、uh, um, some a, an example that I have run into personally, and it's a big pain in the ass.、Um, in Turkish, 
if you add uh, um, if you have this I here and call to upper uh, to lower sorry it would become this one it would not become um, so uh, for uh, for the same because we we're used to this one and this one in in um, O Latin characters but it's um, if you're not using the locale properly when you're doing some to upper or um, ca O caps, um, it will bring you some problems. And yet another thing is the the number format. Um, um, I am always astonished on oh no, oh Taiwan here. Uh, I'm always astonished by um, how many formats that there can be because the first time when I know that there are there are some countries who use period as the thousand separators and um, or when there are some countries that use comma as the decimal separator it's just a, a totally new word to me and it's always hard to parse these things and moreover we're not you actually in Chinese we're not using the um, the thousand million format we're using something like ten thousand one and a uh, um, hundred million e so it's this is yet another example of how localization can take place in your your software. So um, because I'm going to talk about the uh, um, uh, the community-based localization today, so we're going to focus on UI strings today. But um, I just like to let you know that it's there are so many. Um, um, why am I focusing on the translation part? It's because. Um, we already have several libraries that can help us to deal with daytime and number and other lo um, localization, t um, other localization issues. Um, but it's just we don't. If you have a dictionary for the words that you're using and localize it through um, through some process, automatically it's just still not working for now. So that's why we need a community to help us with the translation process because um, the machine translation is is still not quite there. It's starting to become a big issue recently, but it's still not quite there. So um, this is a localization process we have and for Firefox Rocket. Um, I'm going to cover the details later, so so uh, you're still free to interrupt me anytime just um, let me know you can just if, if, if I fail to find you just raise your hand and maybe speak out loud maybe um, but I'll talk about the details later so first of all we have the um, um, the strings.xml in the Android world um, I'm going to talk about it in detail later um, but we and at in our localization tool, Pontoon, we need to convert the XML into PLT and PO files. And um, so we have that step two layer. And later we would, um, it's, all, our, all of our localization is actually located in yet another repository outside of our code base. So we will send a PR for review after we um, convert to the um, PLT and PO file and ask them to have a review. And if the review, if there's no problem with the review process, um, we will uh, import it into the pontoon, and uh, our community localizer, localizer, localizers can work on it. And after that, we will again take the uh, take the take export from the pontoon database to um, the PO and POT file, and we can merge the PO to PO and POT file back to convert it back to XML and import to our code base. So um, this is just an um, introduct introductory of if you're not familiar with how we're doing localizations on Android. Um, we have several strings.xml in Android. For example, there's like this one. Um, it's in a XML format, so it's string, name, and uh, ID. We need to have an ID for it and OK. OK is the, uh, the string that we're using in our uh, visually, visually UI on our UI. So, uh, so this is the root, the, the value strings.xml file that we have. And in, um, there is the, that is the unlocalized version. And for in this case, it's English. 
in our in our project. So there are some other strings that XML, and it would have other um, every every same entry there, and it has the same um, same ID here. Uh, but the dip, the main difference would be the localized string would be um, put into the between the tags. So um, we're converted converting the XML files to the PO file, and this is the format of the PO file. Um, it's actually pretty it's pretty simple. Um, there's a in the M message ID. It, instead of using a, um, a naming a explicit ID, it's direct. We use un untranslated string here directly, and in the MSG string MSG STR part, there's the translated string. And uh, um, this is the localization tool we have. It's called Pontoon. It's open source. If you want to host it yourself, feel, um, feel free. There will have some. We'll have some instructions of how to host it yourself in the very end of this slide. I'm not going to go through it, but you can try it if you're interested. But um, it's actually currently, at least currently, serving only Mozilla. So it's not intended to be. It may be pretty hard for you to um, start your own project. That's the unit we have in our um, a project, like Firefox Rocket is a par project. Um, starting your own project might be, um, I haven't figured out how we can do that on uh, on a self host pontoon yet, because it's, um, it's mainly open source only for debug purpose. But um, if you're interested, you can just try it. There are also some. Um, um, some other commercial tools that I will mention later that you can utilize for this community-based localization process. So why are we trans um, converting the XML files to the PO format? Um, the biggest reason is because um, Pontoon only support PO for now, but I feel like there are some more reasons for that because, um, for example, the inter interchangeability. Uh, with PO files, which is a well-recognized format for localization, we can share strings with other projects, like if there's a desktop version of Firefox Rocket, or if we want to share the resource with Firefox. Um, it is possible because they're in the GNU get text, which is uh, the, the tool I'm going to talk about later. Um, there are some ways that we can uh, we can concat the two PO files, or we can differentiate, or we can find a differentiate ID or what is not localized. There are some tool, existing tools in the GNU get text, which is also the or where PO files originates from. And the last part is clarity and simplicity. That's uh, I'll say that uh, I'm claiming this because in Android there's a two-layer structure. You have a root, which is the English version of the of the file, and you have the others are the localization of that root. But in uh, PO files format, we have seen that um, the unlocalized string English is already in the file itself. So um, every file is a standalone, is standalone. So you can maintain it in different communities, or like uh, the Chinese communities or in the Indonesia communities. They don't need to work. Um, Cross-reference the root, the root string dot XML like we have in the Android echo ecosystem. So uh, I'm go I'm going to talk about the A 2 PO project, which is sadly based in Python, um, uh, because that's the that's the one we that's how you can convert. That's a project that helps you convert between PO and XML, and I think that this project is exists. Exactly because the reason I mentioned that there are some benefits we have in when we use PO, PO and POT files, uh, and these are just the dependencies. It uses Babel, XML, and Arc parse to parse the um, parse and deal with the local uh, with the locales. So this is how we use the A2PO in Rocket. So uh, basically, every time when we want to export in the first step, I mentioned in the process we have. Um, we will just call Python a to the PO that py export, and basically later we will create commits that help us to send the pull request to the um, to the repository of localization localized files. 
and an import is still pretty simple, a2po.py import. But um, there are some problems that they have in the a2po project. Like, for example, it should be values slash es slash rmx for Hispaniola, Mexico, I think. But it's using the wrong format. It's ignoring the R. So we need to replace the R by ourselves in the next um, tools, L10, fix, locale, folders. This, you can have this source file and uh, for Rocket's source, source code on GitHub if you're interested. And yeah, that's it. And there are also some pitfalls that we have experienced that I would like to share to you, Led. Um, because at, Mo at Mozilla, we believe that internet should be an open and uh, should be, an, should be an, uh, an asset that's open and accessible for all. So we will have more locales. We will have some locales that is not um, traditionally localized by some big companies. For example, Javanese. Uh, Javanese is because we're uh, one of our target countries is Indonesia, and Javanese is also uh, a well-known language that is used there. Um, um, however, if you have tried to find Javanese in your Android apps systems language, you won't find it there because um, it's separated. The, the, the loc locales that is supported and the locales that is provided in the um, Android system, it's separated, it's different. Um, we have a, a pan, in an appendix, there's a table there. If you're interested, you can just find it there. Um, so for that reason, um, a Javanese user will never be able to change the, change the locale into Javanese um, in their system preference. So that's why we will need a locale switcher in, um, in, in our app. So if you're interested, the source code is here. And this is the project I have mentioned, Mozilla Taiwan Rocket. And there's an Android-based locale system that you can uh, basically, every time when you pick a new locale, the application will, um, the activity will be recreated. So um, also, there are some locales that are not recognized by Babel, like Javanese. So we have a patch around uh, Android, Android to PO, and it's located here. If you want to look at what we have done to fix that. Um, so yeah, these are the tools that I have mentioned that might be available for your Android apps. So um, it's Xanata, which is I think is one of the well-known ones. And I've also found that um, there's a new one that is now supporting Android XML. So you can directly have you don't need to don't need the conversions that I have mentioned. But I think for Xanata, you still need to um, localize your PO files. So that's so for my part, and I'm going to hand over to Nevin, and he's going to talk about. I'm going to leave it to himself. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Uh, thanks, Tembao. Uh, community is very important to us because uh, they, w whenever we launch a new app, they will promote for us. So uh, it's it's a it's a key of uh, our organic growth. So I'm going to talk about Firebase today. So uh, basically, I want to know uh, how many of you are Android developers. Oh, so less. Than <laughs> so. It's fewer than I imagined. So, uh, how many of you have uh, uh, have already integrated iFirebase? Okay. So, I guess not many. Uh, the talk I'm going to talk about today is a little bit uh, like an advanced topic because I, I did some hack around Firebase. Uh, basically, because uh, we want to, like uh, Tempa said, we want to uh, let make the internet open. So, uh, the users need to have the ability to switch Firebase at runtime. So most of the features they provided now, uh, you cannot do it. Uh, you have to initialize the Firebase first, and then you can decide. You can turn it off uh, some part of the features, but you cannot do it uh, completely. So um, this is why do we have a pref in our app called send user data. If you uh, if you turn it on, and then we'll start to collect your data, and if you turn it off, we'll just uh, stop there uh, in immediately. So this is the feature that uh, requested by our internal. So we uh, do a hack around around it. So I'm not to teach you how to do Firebase integration. I'm going to introduce um, the, the, the things I've learned during this, this hack, OK? So uh, the APIs may be changed. So probably this, uh, this hack will not work in the future. But the, the concept is, uh, is valuable to me. So I want to share it to you. 
Okay, so I, we uh, integrate four parts. One is analytics, uh, question analytics, and cloud messaging, remote config. For those you don't uh, for those you don't have experience, analytics is like Google Analytics, but it's now in Firebase. Uh, crash analytics, they, they buy, they bought uh, Fabric, so you collect, collect, collect the crash reports. And cloud messaging, that you send push notification uh, to your Android app. A remote config, uh, so so you can do A/B testing on your configuration files, so the user can see different UIs or see because they get different configuration, uh, because they are different group, like a, a male, females, or the different ages. So you, if you fall into different group, then you can show the different uh, UIs, or you can have different business logic there. So this is very useful. Uh, the benefit to use Firebase, I didn't work for them, <laughs> but the benefit to uh, use Firebase is you can there's a one-stop shop. So you can target different users. Uh, you can push not send push notification according to an analysis, analysis results or question list report results or remote com A-B testing results. This is something you cannot do if you use three apps, if you use three uh, libraries. Um, this will be hard. So we have a we're, we're a smaller group, but we want to uh, do it as fast as possible. So that's uh, how we why we choose to use Firebase. So first thing I'm going to talk about is how the library st starts. So this is very Android. So before, we were like 4.4 or something, a very long time ago when I started doing Android, every time library you need some kind of initialization call, right? So if, if, if you add a dependency to your a APK, and then you need to call, let the a a library knows when to start the, uh, that li library. But nowadays, all the calls are gone. Why? So uh, because well, I want to disable it. And, but I don't know where it, where it is added. So firstly, I, I need to know when the app starts. And then they will count the, uh, the rest part, content provider, and how to use our own strategy. So this is manifest merging. If you wrote Android code, you know there's, a, there's something called manifest that will, the Android app will report to the si to Android system and tell the system what components do you have. Okay, so normally you have an activity, right? Android developer knows it. You have an activity, the start launcher. Uh, you have maybe have content provider. Uh, you can send stuff to the other app. You can share information with the other app, the other app. and uh, broadcast receiver. We will send uh, broadcast uh, by from the other apps. And you may have a service, so you can run a non, you can run stuff without UI. And activity, you can run stuff with UI. So um, this is the process of merging and manifest. So when you when you uh, when you add a library to it, the library module also have its own manifest. So it will add your manifest to your APK uh, under the hood. So if you your, if you decompress your uh, uh, APK and find the, the your, see your manifest, you'll find a lot of things that you didn't add. So that's the first step. Uh, I always uh, when I want to an analyze app or a library, this is the first step. The first step I will go the manifest. Okay, so I see the manifest. How do I know uh, who inject this part of uh, Android component into my app? So there's a tool in Android Studio, it's right here. Uh, if you cannot find it, oh sorry. If you cannot find it, uh, you just command shift or just using a find actions and uh, search for manifest merging or merge manifest. And you'll see if you click on any items and uh, it will be right there. So you found, for example, uh, I've, I just found that, see, uh, there's a Firebase init provider that was added by Firebase common. So, Firebase common is not something you know because when you add the libraries, it's in uh, the dependency in a build.guero file. So you know, okay, Firebase add this stuff to my app. Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to look at the source code of it. And you found, okay, here's it, here it is. This is um, initialization calls. So previously, when you want to integrate Firebase, you need to call this by yourself. But now they put it in the content provider, so it will call for you. But why, if, why is that putting a content provider will call for you? We'll talk about it later. So this, the other thing is crash analytics. The, if you previously used crash analytics before, like two years ago, before they bought by uh, Google, they also have uh, this uh, initialization call. But now it's also gone, it's hidden in content provider. And I look at the source code. Uh, why content provider? Because this is activitythreads.java. First you found y the uh, Android system will install content provider first when they launch your app. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, when they um, yeah, when they launch your app, uh, they uh, it will install the content provider first, and then they will call instrumentation that call application on create. The app pass in here is the application, the application class that initialized in, uh, uh, by the Android system. 
And in that call, you just call application.onCreate. And in this call, in the above install con content provider call, it will um, it will call content provider dot create uncreate. So we know <coughs> that all content provider will start before the act uh, activity. So that's where they inject the secret calls. So that's the that's the main takeaway of this talk. So if you want to go to the bathroom, you can go now. <laughs> There's no other thing no other thing left. Okay. So how do I is how do I how do I I don't want to use their content provider. I want to start by myself. How do I do it? So in the Android manifest, you just add these two lines. Uh, one line to snow it remove when they do uh, so when they add and when we build the app and do the manifest merging um, it will re, uh, it will ignore their the, the Android components in it and then you probably want to add your own con uh, customized content provider or you don't want a custom content provider you want to call it directly in your uh, application that uncreate it's totally fine. Oh, by the way, for those who don't understand, application down uh, create is kind of like the starting point of uh, of your Android component uh, of your Android app. So you can have uh, your own business logic there. See, looking for share share preference and see if you want to initialize the app. So this is a simplified, much simplified version, but this is the idea of it. Okay, so uh, now we know how to uh, start the app and uh, start the library. But there are four components. There are four features in it like analytics analytics uh, using analytics there there is a very good documentation uh, about how do you disable analytics uh, analytics stack collection like uh, the events ping uh, the, uh, or um, of the you don't want to collect user certain user attributes some pings are collected automatically and some are not so uh, if you if you follow the, uh, the document there's a way you can disable it enable it <coughs> but <coughs> the crash analytics <coughs> They just recently um, bought it and inter try to ing integrate with it. So the, uh, there's no there's no other way to do it. So if you see the document, say okay, you cannot. You need to restart the app. So because the uh, the, the, the the flip is in a uh, content provider. So once your app is start, there's no way to recall the content provider again. So how do we do, how how do I do it? Uh, I found out. I want to know how exactly. Crash Analytics works. So I searched on the internet and say and found there's a there's a there's a class called uncalled un exception handler. So basically, uncalled exception handler will call will catch the exceptions that you didn't catch. So this is I think Java has the same, not um, for Android. For for Android, if you had crash, uh, you, you, you if you have exception you didn't catch it, you will see this 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 dialog. A part of the dialog like re, like reopen again is handled by the. Uh, Uncalled exception handler, the default uncalled exception handler. So, uh, I also look at this at the stuff that it added to my <coughs> APK, and I found okay, Crash Analytics has its own uh, uncalled exception handler, and in the in the call in their app, there um, there's a it's not up it's it's not obviously case. So I can see the source code. There's a default handler. So I want to. I want you. It will catch its default. The system's default handler. The app's default handler first, and then they will replace use theirselves. The, it, they will. It will use theirs. So um, I want to. I want it. So what I do? I do a reflection. Sorry. Uh, I do a reflection on it and I catch it. And I. I, will, I will, and then, I will switch. To different uh, uncalled exception handler, at runtime. And to decide if I want to use Firebase one or use the system ones. So this is a kind of hacky. So if you want to do this hack, be sure you have to um, write UI test or small test for this. Otherwise, it will break. Uh, cloud messaging. So cloud messaging is something you can you have if you have a service in your app, and then the service will listen to the push no, the push uh, from the server, and you will you can show a notif notification there or do whatever you want. So there's a there's a way to do it and. Um, in uh, in a document, but to disable it completely, use uh, use the there's a technique 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 in Android called package manager that set component enable settings. So basically, every Android components you can use it to disable it, like activity content providers, whatever. Give it a name, component name, and you can disable it by yourself. So this is another very uh, strong uh, like useful techniques. So this is how it this is how it goes. Um, you pass in the states. Oh, sorry, too fast. You pass in the states, and then call package manager dot set component enable settings, and it will uh, it will do it for you. 
So the, the thing of what we are doing, we are trying to stop here is the messaging service. So this is the Android, this is the service that you normally integrate with, with Firebase, you just disa dis disable it. Remote config. So remote config is, um, so the API keeps changing. It didn't, uh, at that, when I started the, uh, the, the test, uh, the, the experiment, there was an, I didn't see this document, but when I did through it, uh, this is not the, the, on, the, on the tutorial, but in the Java doc, they have this Firebase instance ID. So if you, this, this instance ID will, is like, like a user identifier to your app. So if you, dis if you delete it, then you will not have push notification, you will not have uh, remote config anymore. So, so this hidden, AP, not hidden, but kind of public, but not very trivial, uh, is this, oh sorry, is this API call, it's delete instance ID, and if you want to resume it, it's get token. So be sure, be, be aware that this, the first thing is, is uh, blocking, so must call it in a background thread, and the second one is asynchronous. So <laughs> when you call it, it will not, um, it will not just happen directly. So I think the best way, if you want to stop the, the, the component immediately, just use, uh, if you want to stop like push notification directly, use the component uh, config settings uh, disabled. Uh, and you can, use the, you can use the wrapper around how you get remote config. So normally, uh, the, the button, uh, the first one is uh, how I wrap it using my default, uh, I get the default value, so, sorry. So if I have a default value, I will just get my if I if I uh, re, my, if my remote config is no, that means I didn't I didn't want remote config. I will use my default value. If it, it is there, if it's not no, and I will get string. Uh, the last one is how you normally get the remote config from uh, the using the their API. So you can use or use another another flag to wrap around that. Okay, so it's coming to conclusions very fast. Uh, the key takeaway is using com uh, content provider is the place you start your library. And the manifest merging, check with tools. Android Studio have very good tooling. Uh, disable components using uh, state components enable settings. And uncall exception handler is where you uh, handle, if you want to do crash analytics by yourself, for example. Like saving the crash symbols and upload it next time when you launch the app is something you can do. And thank you. Uh, I think Tenbao has something to add. Uh, Yes. Maybe first the Q&A, and if I still have some time, I can talk about that. So, anything yeah. about Firebase? So normally about Firebase, there will be uh, like three sessions, or four sessions for each topics. But today, I'm just, I just should see it as a kind of like hacking through these components, and I uh, want to dig into Android components more. So I think the very best way is to have, have a breakpoint, Add your Android, Android, Android code, like super dot blah blah blah. Just just make a post there and see the code stack, so you can see how the how the how the Android starts your app, all the way to your um, to your uh, the code you write you wrote. Yeah, so this is very something uh, something I've learned. Uh, it's easier to search on the internet and stack over for for results because you just look in the so look into the source code, and you have something to brag with. <laughs> no, you have something to share with other people. So this is a very useful stuff. So, not have to be Firebase related, or how do I how do I do debugging or um, yeah stuff like that. It's okay. So any Android or Java related questions, we can take it. But uh, while you're thinking, I can talk about more about um, um, something I didn't mention earlier. First of all, let's talk about Pontoon. Um, this is how you can set up your own Pontoon. Um, the steps here, it's a little bit vague. It's too small, but it's all available on um, GitHub, Mozilla, Pontoon. And basically, um, you just um, clone the, because I, I'm not, I'm not a, a web developer at all. So I just follow the, the steps. And um, the main takeaway, and this slide is you should start at localhost 8000 rather than 3000. It is um, what is shown in a script because <laughs> that's that's yet another. Um, that's yet uh, there are two entry points and 8000 is the one that you you should try if you want to start Pontoon. And this is one other thing that I talk about that 
Um, ICU is the international component for Unicode, which is a standard for Unicode. And um, on Android, after Android 7, you can use ICU 4J, which is exactly the tool that I talk about how you can handle um, localization for like the time format or um, um, or maybe the, the decimal format. And also, if you want to know what kind of what locales are available on different Android versions, it's also, um, you can go to this um, android.developers resources internal, inter, internationalization. That's, that's long. Um, and you, you, you can have a table about, um, it would tell you how, um, what, what is available in each Android version. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. And if still no, I think that would wrap up. I have a one slide. <laughs> oh, we have one slide. So <laughs> we are hiring. <laughs> so <laughs> we are hiring Android developers. Um, yeah. So if you have something, if you're interested in, so it's yeah. We're currently hiring Android developers too. So that's something for JavaCom, I guess. And but also there are some designers and uh, um, project managers, I guess. Just check that in our link. And if you need that link, you can just ask Nevin. Uh, we still had a general manager opening. So uh, yeah, we need, the, we need our bus. So if you want to be our bus, yeah. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for your listening. And that's all we, all we like to share. Thank you.